Hello everyone, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my October wrap up part two. I read a lot of books throughout October. I think I read like nine or 10. I'll leave part one in the description box down below so you can go have a look at that if you're interested. Let's get into the books I read throughout the second half of October. The first one being A Tiny Bit Marvelous by Dawn French. Probably the worst book I've read this year so far. One out of five stars from me. I'm just going to be absolutely blunt and say I hated this book. Hated it. I just felt like it was this lengthy, mindless piece of fiction about a family complaining about first world problems. Occasionally it would slot in some British slang word like minge, which means vagina, and have that as an attempt to be funny and humorous. It, it wasn't, it was just annoying. A Tiny Bit Marvellous should not have been the title of this book. A big pile of shit is what it should have been called. All this book did was give me a headache. All it's about is a self-centered, narcissistic family that are just whinging about their love lives, A-levels, weight, whatever the flip they want to complain about on that given moment. It's a ridiculous book with no depth and filled with one-dimensional cliche characters that drove me insane. The writing is shitty, the characters are shitty, the book is shitty, just shitty, shitty, shitty. All this book did was make me crave a naughty pie and paracetamol. Then I went on to torture myself further because this book was literally, it, people said to me, this book is rubbish, don't read it. But what did I do? I went and read it. Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I even did a whole video vlog of my reading experience of it, which I'll also leave in the description box down below. So Survive the Night is about this girl called Charlie. She's connected with someone through this rideshare app. They're driving across country together and making small talk along the way just to pass the time. They are both actively trying to avoid the topic that is kind of at the forefront of their minds, the campus killer. But as Charlie gets to know the guy behind the wheel, Josh, she starts to realize that everything he's saying isn't really adding up. She starts to wonder, is she trapped in the car with the serial killer? Dum -dum -dum. To me, that premise sounded really good and I was like, how bad could this book be? I, I curiosity killed the cat and I, I had to. Personally, I think that that premise oozes suspense. Honestly, I think I enjoyed this book more than the majority of people, which is a rarity, as you could tell from my previous review. <laughs> it can be quite harsh. It was quite a slow start, and it did seem a bit bland in the beginning, but then the book ramped up, and for a moment I was like, oh, is this going to take a bit of like a paranormal turn? But it didn't. I would have to say it's another book about an unreliable narrator, and it's just been so overdone. Things play out like movies in her head, so she's struggling to realize what is real and what's not. But this book was rife with tension and just kept me gripped all the way through. I actually think that it's one of the better Riley Sager books that I've read. Like the writing wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't terrible either. Just a, a pretty all right book. So I gave it three out of five stars. Overall, I thought it was just an easy fun read, though it, it did take a couple of twists that were a bit too bizarre for me. Too many suspects, red herrings, that kind of thing. So yeah, it just it was all right. And then I jumped onto the Freedom McFadden train because I have seen her books floating around everywhere lately and I was just like, hmm, let's give it a go. A new thriller author? Yes, please. So this is a book about this girl called Millie and she takes up a living position cleaning the Winchester's house. Her job is to look after the young daughter, kind of bite her lip at the mother and how she's just trying to make as much mess as possible and make her job as difficult for her as possibly can be done. She also tries really hard not to be attracted to Nina Winchester's husband. But it kind of feels. As difficult as the job is, it's not perfect by any means, she needs this job and it, it you know there's there's weird things going on like the, her door to her bedroom locks from the outside and uh, things like that but it's better than sleeping in her car because that would be a violation of her parole and then she'd go back to jail. I found this book such a gripping fun read, I devoured it within 24 hours, could not put it down. Honestly I can't hype it enough, it had everything that I love in a good popcorn thriller. It was pacey, it was juicy, it was thrilling, literally all-consuming. I was totally engrossed, like Nina's deteriorating mental state was just fascinating to read about. And the twists just kept coming. House Made by Frieda McFadden just had this, this creepiness that I rarely find in thrillers that, that is pulled off so perfectly. There was this disturbing feel that was just etched into this book and it shone through so fantastically. I was always in suspense with this book. I was kept on the edge of my seat. I, I was literally just like biting my fingernails with it and just needing to know what happens next. It was page turning. 
I loved it so so much what I loved about it was that it was dark it was sexy but it was it was also like dripping with humor the only thing I would say that this book actually lacked was a bit of that creepy child element that could have been played towards more I mean is there anything more terrifying than a kid that you can't trust no the housemaid is just the perfect addition to psychological thrillers no, it's not totally unique and it did take a lot of those like thrillery tropes that have been done before but then it kind of went on its own path and it worked yeah i found it really surprising entertaining i loved it so much that i went and bought another book by the same author straight after i'd finished it and that book was the surrogate mother by freedom Fadden. so this is about this girl called abby and after years of infertility she's so excited because she's finally getting her baby through a surrogate mother but on her baby shower she gets news that the mother's decided to keep the baby and her world just comes crashing down she feels like she's lost all hope and then her personal assistant decides to give her the one thing that means the absolute world to her she decides to become her surrogate mother i did find this book a lot more hard hitting than the housemaid because i'm at that stage in my life now where infertility is probably the scariest no definitely the, the scariest thing that could possibly happen and it, you know it's such a, a reality for so many people that it was terrifying for me it, it, it was hard to hard to read and there were times where I had to put the book down and literally wipe tears from my eyes because I, it was just hard to to stomach even thinking about that kind of possibility is just heartbreaking so I, I really I felt I felt the characters a lot so yeah, I would hazard some serious trigger warnings about infertility with this one. But it was an excellent book nonetheless. I know that I'm new to McFadden's writing, but second book I've read from her and I just find that I found it so utterly addictive and compelling. It's just a deliciously entertaining, twisted, crazy, fun. Though with this one, I did get quite frustrated with the characters, particularly the husband. His personality just irked me beyond belief. I just don't feel like any husband would, would have that level of coldness towards their wife. His logic, his nature, his actions and reactions, they just didn't seem that, it didn't seem plausible to me that someone would actually react that way. Fuck my life, what the hell was that? <laughs> the plants are alive. Yes, so the husband kind of made me knock a star off with this one, so it was a four out of five star for me, but still so good. That ending, it just left me so unsettled in a way that we can only really enjoy if we're into thrillers. And then I read It Starts With The Egg by Rebecca Fett, which has been um, recommended to anyone that is trying to conceive or is thinking about starting to conceive, has infertility issues, or is going through IVF or something like that. It's about how the science of egg quality can help you get pregnant naturally, prevent miscarriage, and improve your odds with IVF. So it's kind of for everyone. There are new chapters in my life starting, and I have been investing a lot of my time into learning more about fertility and egg health, things like that, just to, you know, when I do something, I need to have that knowledge to know what, what it is that I'm about to invest my time and my life into. I did find It Starts With The Egg really enlightening in many ways. It's an eye-opening scientific book. You know, it's, it's got lots of information and advice that I am going to be implementing into my everyday life however I can. You know, simple things like BPA-free pr products and how it's not actually that good for you either way because if they take away the thing BPA in, in like a plastic bottle, they're replacing it with another kind of uh, chemical or something to create that hard plastic. So it's equally as bad for you or, or very much similar. Uh, household cleaning products, nail polish, things like that are really harmful for you and your fertility. So it was very interesting to kind of like look around the house and be like, ah, I do think that this book is a really great investment of your time, no matter where you are in your pregnancy or conceiving journey. And what made me give this book a five out of five stars was that it, you know, a lot of these scientifically based books can just kind of load you with information about science and the facts and stuff. But this one was a bit more personal and it, I, I walked away from it feeling inspired and, and hopeful. It had happily ever after stories and people getting their, you know, their perfect miracle baby and stuff. And that, it was just really nice and it gave me a good feeling. So yeah, it kind of made me want to sprinkle the baby dust everywhere. Then I finished the month on another Freedom McFadden book, three McFadden books in one month. Yes, and that one was Do Not Disturb. So this is a book about Quinn Alexander who is on the run after murdering her husband. But this snowstorm forces her into this kind of creepy motel and she has to hide out there before she can carry on running away and um, survive the night. 
all of her mugs just grab you from the very first page and this one's no different. Do Not Disturb is addictive. It's a Hitchcock inspired story filled with twists and turns. None of her books thus far have been disappointing for me. They're just fun and compulsive reads. They're, like, they're just so quick to read, but they don't lack that intensity that I need in a book. I did find Do Not Disturb really unpredictable and shocking. And yeah, it was just a page turner that kept me up all night. However, out of all three of the books, I do think that Do Not Disturb is probably my least favorite. I did have my qualms with it. The main one being one of the characters just seemed to do a complete 180. One moment, she, there's chapters of her where she's got all this love and stuff for Quinn as the main character. And in other chapters, it's just polar opposite. And yeah, I just felt like that was a bit too like, huh? Didn't really make sense. Yeah, the, the twist at the end was great. I enjoyed it, but that personality change was a bit too much for me. So do not disturb, I gave a solid three and a half out of five stars. And they were my last books in October. It's now November and the start of NaNoWriMo. <sighs> Am I writing anything? No, I don't have the time. <laughs> it's going to be the first year that I haven't participated in NaNoWriMo and that's so sad. Next year, I think I'm going to like plan it all properly and do it properly, but it's just such a big commitment and I've never won NaNoWriMo and I've just not been inspired to write lately at all the last year too. It's been, it's been so hard. I've got two manuscripts that I'm lugging around with me everywhere I go, but just even looking at them, I'm just like, I get inspired if I see like one of my old mock-up cover designs or something. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I want to write again. But then I think about writing again and I'm like, ooh, it will come back. It always does, but yeah. I think, I just, I wish, I don't know what I wish. I just need to get my shit together, really. Anyway, let me know what book you really enjoyed throughout October, what you're reading now, chat in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye.